Man drives from Texas to Louisiana to save his belongings from flood. He knew that what he had brought back with him from out of state would save him and his family their livelihood. It sure cost a lot, but it would be worth it. Others didn't believe him. They laughed at the spectacle he was making. But he ignored them and kept at it. He hadn't driven all the way to Louisiana for nothing, everyone watching would see. Randy Wagner's father had shaped the way he thought about life. He taught him from a young age that things in life were hard to come by. Randy had worked hard to get where he was. He had a loving family and a nice home in Rosheron, Texas. But now Mother Nature had other ideas. Texas had some incredible storms in May 2016 and would pelt the state for seven consecutive days. This had unforeseen effects. People could only watch as the water started to get higher and higher. Randy knew that this would be a problem. The storm was no joke. Randy lived just 100 miles away from Brenham County which had 19 inches of rain. Many roads had to be closed and people even went missing. It was a very serious situation. But it seemed that people living in Brazoria County weren't too concerned about the storm. Randy knew that they were wrong to do so. The people didn't take things seriously even with the flood warnings. The storm can't possibly be that bad, Randy overheard a few residents say. They even wanted to capture the storm on social media for sympathy. They had no idea what they were in for. But one month after that they had first heard about the flood then the evacuation order came in. Only then did the residents take things serious. No one had stockpiled supplies like Randy had which would leave them in a panic while he was calm and collected. He didn't want a flood destroying his livelihood. He had to make a plan, he didn't want to have to abandon all that he had worked for. But how could he go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mother Nature? He raced to Louisiana while his family started packing their things. He needed to protect what was his. The 260-mile trip was a tough one, and once he got there he handed over $8,300 and loaded something into his truck. Once he got home, he saw people scrambling all around him. He kept calm and got to opening the thing he had loaded into his car. Randy positioned the tubes around his perimeter and fired up two gasoline pumps. The smell and the spectacle in the yard began to attract people as they were loading up their cars. Huge, overripe clouds began to blow in from the south. Still, Randy's neighbors weren't about to let an opportunity to mock him slip by. They gathered and all began to point and laugh at Randy's desperate bid to outweep Mother Nature herself. Randy's wife came out to see what all the fuss was about, then she looked horrified to see that her husband's pig-headedness had culminated in this, an enormous tube that looked like a glorified kid's water wing encircled the entire property. She began to yell at Randy. He was supposed to be getting ready to evacuate with her and the kids. What did he think he was doing? Meanwhile, the president declared a state of disaster. Airboats and military vehicles were scrambling to evacuate locals in Brazoria County. The Brazos River had burst its banks, sending feet of water to destroy everything in its path. Thankfully, as Randy toiled to get the strange device ready, the water hadn't reached his neighborhood yet, but it was only a matter of time. Still, the neighbors, who should have been evacuating, jeered as they watched Randy battling to fill the giant black tubes that snaked around his property. Why isn't he leaving, some murmured, he's crazy, others concluded. Randy continued to fill the inner tubes from a nearby ditch. Slowly, they began to rise. He's filling it with water, one nosy neighbor cackled. But what was Randy actually doing? You see, Randy had searched for some way, any way, of stopping the water from reaching his beloved home. He'd seen people erect all kinds of barriers before. It wasn't long before he found a contraption called an aquadam online and thought it just might work. The contraption was a gigantic, watertight tube that was 30 inches tall and 450 feet long. While the other neighbors who had foresight struggled to make dams around their properties with sandbags, Randy was erecting one complete barrier. It took Randy half a day to erect the aquadam. By that time, everyone had left. The water arrived just a day later, then it began to rise. Randy watched as the flood swallowed up the surrounding homes and swelled against the aquadam. But would it hold? If the water reached 30 inches deep, he'd know that he had made a grave mistake. Reports and pictures of the devastation began to arrive on TV. Waterlogged houses and businesses had been laid to waste. However, as footage from the news helicopter began to circulate, 
It was apparent that one house stood smugly high and dry, randy small green island in the middle of the brown, 27-inch sea. The thing is, he wasn't alone. Far away, someone else was dealing with the same danger, but didn't have the luxury of an inflatable barrier. Over in Little Rock, Arkansas, James Hill was watching the television reports with rising dread. It seemed that their area wasn't going to be spared either. Heavy rains were causing flash floods in countless towns and vast stretches of countryside. He looked over at his family, and saw their faces as pale as his. What were they going to do? When the report said to expect at least 10 inches, James felt like he was going to be sick. It wasn't just the fate of the family that hung in the balance. It was the 10,000 acres of crops that were sitting on the front lines of the coming attack. The ability to put food on the table and warm their home could be washed away. But, more than anything, he had to keep his two sons and wife safe. But what was the solution? Just pack up their most cherished belongings and scatter like the rest of their neighbors. He looked around the living room at the numerous family photos and heirlooms with a deep stab of pain. Moments later, James spotted the red and gray glint of metal near the barn, the perfect light bulb went off in his head. Perhaps there was something they could do besides abandon everything. He grabbed the keys and tossed them to his oldest son. Let's get started, he said. The others looked at him with confusion. You mean we're leaving, his? Not yet, he soothed. Run to the gas station and fill up all the cans with diesel. The confusion grew. But honey, his wife said, the car doesn't take diesel. James pointed out to the solution that was hiding behind the barn. There was one final stand they could take. As the motor spat and sputtered to life, then dropped to a deep rumble, he finally let a small smile of hope appear. He hadn't used the old excavator in over six months. Soon, however, he would find that this piece of heavy machinery wouldn't gain him any friends. In fact, he was about to lose a few. James and his family had felt the devastation of flooding years ago, and he was determined to escape this new wave. Between him and his two boys, they used the digger to claw up earth and build their own levee around the house. It was now a race against time. His wife had been scrambling to move things upstairs. But when James came in for a quick power bar to satiate his hunger, he noticed she had been crying. It was worse than expected. A few neighbors had seen what was going on and called to beg James to come over and do the same for their house. There was just one, huge problem. The clouds were already rolling in and darkening the sky like evening was coming. They were already praying to God to hold off the flood long enough to finish their own barrier. There was just not time to help anyone else. But the neighbors didn't seem to care. When the first drops began to fall, James held his breath and pushed the excavator hard, they still weren't done yet. James ignored the endless stream of water running down his face. At this point, they were scraping mud to the makeshift levee. It was a miracle they managed to finish just in time, but it was only their house that would stay safe. The crops were gone. Their friends had evacuated too. At least his family would be safe.